we won't always be able to specify ahead of time which comparisons we'll want to make among all of the sample means we obtained. So we also need procedures for unplanned comparisons, in other words, for post hoc tests. Now the procedure I want to tell you about was developed by John W. Tukey. Now Tukey introduced the word bit as binary digit, the term software, He's also a famous statistician and is famous for making popular exploratory data analysis. I'll tell you more about Tukey in later modules, but what Tukey developed, along with Kramer, was something known as the Honestly Significant Difference Test. Now, don't worry about the formula for this, but what the HSD test does for us is develop what the largest mean difference considered honestly different is given the number of comparisons we're making. That is, how big of a difference should we expect among the sample means based on the number of different comparisons we could possibly make? Now, Q is called the studentized range statistic, and it's based on the number of treatments we have, the degrees of freedom for the mean squared error, and the alpha level for the family of comparisons. What's especially useful about the Tukey Kramer HSD test is that even without specifying which particular mean comparisons we want to make, we can look at every difference. And based on the formulation of the test, we can be sure that our overall family-wise error rate is no higher than the rate we specify. So this test allows us to specify that we want to look at every comparison and let the data tell us which one is interesting. Let's see how we would apply this test using jump. I'll again use the IQ for the different drugs dataset because we have many possible comparisons to look at. Let's go to the Analyze menu and select again fit Y by X. I'll put drug as my factor and IQ as my Y response. When I click OK, I again get the dot plots for the different drugs and this time I'll go to the red triangle and under Compare Means, I'll select All Pairs to key HSD. Again, this will protect our overall error rate for every possible comparison, so we are licensed to look at any comparison we like. Another way of saying this is, if we run this test and get a statistically significant result, we don't need to worry that we're capitalizing on chance. That is, our overall alpha rate is 0.05 regardless of the number of comparisons we have. Let me run this result, and you'll see that we get a very similar output to the least square student's t-test. I'll again hide the LSD difference matrix, and you'll see that we also get a connecting letters report and the order differences report. You may notice one striking thing. Our p-values in this output have been changed. That is, the p-values here no longer reflect the probability of obtaining that particular mean difference alone. These p-values have been corrected given the number of comparisons we have. That is, the probability of obtaining a difference as big as this given the fact that we are running 190 comparisons. So these p-values are considerably higher because it is incredibly likely to get a difference of 6.72 when we're running 190 comparisons. Another way to think about this is if we look at all the different categories we have, it is very likely that we'll get one group that's very high and one group that's very low. These sample means are all varying around the population mean, and when we have many of them, there will be one that is very high and one that is very low. That will simply happen by chance alone. So the p-values we get from this particular type of test corrects for the fact that we have that many possible means varying around the population mean. So these p-values can be interpreted relative to our standard alpha level. No change to our alpha level needs to be made because the p-values have been corrected. Now this test is especially useful when we don't know what we'll be comparing. And in this case, it would be the proper test to run. Before the fact, we probably wanted to look at every different drug compared to every other drug. So this test allows us to look at these tests without worrying about our family-wise error rate. Over all the tests, the probability of making one or more false alarms is 0.05 if the null hypothesis is true.